This video shows you how to troubleshoot a grinding noise or a squealing noise on your braking system. Each time I come to a full stop when hitting the brakes, the noise became more evident. Or during acceleration, if I hit the brakes lightly, you know, the, brake, the, the noise became, you know, more increasingly evident. As you wind down your car window, the noise becomes more audible. The solution being preferred here is not a one-size-fits-all. It could be a myriad or a host of other reasons. There is a good chance that most defects are peculiar and as such needs to be reviewed on a case-by-case -case basis with respect to finding the root cause. So, I somewhat collected objective evidence of the noise that was emanating from the wheel during acceleration. So, actively listen in to see if the noise is coming from your engine or if it's coming from your wheels. In this case, it was coming from the wheels, okay? When I was partly hitting on them brakes, so you would hear the noise in a jiffy whilst accelerating on a test drive. This squealing noise becomes more apparent when I lightly heat on them brakes. But when I come to a full stop, you know, I get more of a grinding noise, you know, on them wheels. Both noises during acceleration or when I come to a full stop are intermittent. So it's a bit of a hit and miss. You don't get it all the time. They come and they go. When these defects developed, my first point of call was to review the last brake inspection report produced by my garage. So, I have marked off the brake specification with respect to its shelf life in green, yellow and red. Green or blue column means it's okay, the yellow, you know, you're in need of change and the red, it means that your component is defective and requires a change as soon as possible. So, the front and rear pad measurements in real time would be matched against the manufacturer's specification limits for the front and rear pads. And this is the minimum threshold specification for the front and rear disc rotor. So, the total thickness of each vented or solid rotor disc, when measured with a micrometer or a vernier, shouldn't fall short of the minimum requirements stipulated here. For the real-time brake report measurements conducted, the front pads measure 4.22 mm and when compared against the specification, it means that it will soon be in need of replacement, but you can still get some useful life out of them pads, okay? So it falls within the mid threshold of 3 mm to 4.5 mm, so it's borderline very okay. But the front disc is 20.66 mm, which almost falls short of the minimum requirement at 20 mm. It is in urgent need of replacement, even if it passes, as it is borderline the minimum requirements. The brake report for them pads on the other front tyre is 4.15 mm which falls between 3 mil and 4.5 mm, so you can still get some useful shelf life out of them pads. The disc for the other front tyre is 20.74 mm. You know, it is in urgent need of replacements, even if it passes, as it is borderline, you know, the minimum requirements of 20 mm. The disc rotor thickness on one of them tyres in the rear reads 9.10 mm. And on the other tyre, it reads 9.15 mm, which is what you've got here. When compared against the minimum requirements of 9 mm, it tells you that it is in urgent need of replacement and you, you, you should replace them as soon as possible, even if they pass, okay? The pads on them are 3.82 and 3.23 mm, and you know, it falls within, you know, the midsection between 2.0 and 3.5 mm, so you can still get some useful life out of them. They're still very good, okay? So, by all means, get a quotation from one of them garages and tailor the fixes or repairs bespoke to your requirements or their recommendations if you're not sure about what you're doing. But what I've opted for with respect to the braking system is to change the brake pads and brake disc on all, all of them four tyres even when I only urgently needed to change the discs on all four tyres. 
and that's because most garages will change your brake pads and brake discs together even when you only need to change the brake discs. So check with your garages if they offer a lifetime warranty on them brake pads so that the next time that you need to change your brake discs you wouldn't need to pay for them brake pads if you've got a lifetime warranty the first time you change them okay suffice to say you will only need to pay for them brake discs the next time you need to change all them brake pads and all them brake discs as quality time and cost is paramount for me when trying to work out repairs okay so this was the last vehicle braking system condition report in line with the repairs that were carried out in this quotation and invoice so since them last repairs the noise from the braking system developed and so this is a more recent vehicle condition report from a different garage you can see that the rear disc is 11.92 which is above the minimum requirements of 10 mil and the front disc is 24.38 millimeter which is above the minimum requirement of 20 mil the rare disc has got a useful life of 96 percent which means i can still get a lot out of it the front pads 38 percent the rare pads 36 percent which means that they're moderately okay so despite the total thickness on them front discs being above the minimum requirement of 20 mil it's been scored a useful life of zero percent and that's because of the front lips which i felt on my brake disc as a result of visual inspection and you know this recent vehicle condition report confirms the probable causes Generally, your brake discs should last 50,000 miles on average, and you might be able to get up to 75 or 80,000 miles if you maintain your brake discs. But your brake discs can deteriorate rapidly from anywhere between 25 to 30,000 miles if you form the habit of braking aggressively, where you wait until the last moment to start braking and you know you slam the pedal down. The more heavy load your car carries on a regular basis, the worse it is for your brakes as it generates more friction on the braking system. And also, if you drive short distances regularly with heavy braking usage through the inner city, the lifespan of your disc is severely reduced as opposed to driving on the motorway where you brake less regularly. If you aren't sure how to retrieve your minimum thickness, go to Eurocar Parts, you know, select brake discs, select, you know, the disc if it's vented or solid, and you should find, you know, the minimum thickness um, where you've got your fitment details or your parts details, okay? So, prior to getting them fixed, I decided to carry out my own visual inspection or due diligence, as, you know, not everyone has got deep pockets and, you know, a lot of cash to fork out, okay? And also, it gives you the peace of mind that you're not just changing something just for the sake of changing it, you know, but a more targeted or surgical fix that would address the root cause. And, you know, when driving, I was looking out for obvious signs like the steering wheel wobbling when driving, you know, brake pedal less being less responsive, the brake performance being reduced, and, you know, the grinding sound when braking. And also, if the car drifts to one side of the road. And whilst visually inspecting, trying to work out if the rotor thickness is below the minimum legal requirement from the car manufacturer. The disc is the very shiny silver bit that you see behind the caliper and which the brake pad latches onto when you hit the brakes. So pretty much the disc is sandwiched between both brake pads in the caliper, okay? The pads do not press on the edge of the disc, so it is pretty normal that the disc has its thicker edge because of the pads, okay? I can feel a rotor edge lip on the other side of the circumference of the um, vented brake discs. If this tire gets taken off and you rotate the steering, you know, further to the left or further to the right and you follow the rotor to the edge you can usually feel or see a noticeable lip okay this lip is created as a result of the brake pads not contacting 
all of the rotor surface and therefore leaves an outer lip when the rotors are worn down. So pre-taking the wheels off I have also looked out for other defects like grooves, you know visible cracks, hit spots due to uneven brake pad deposits often leading or resulting in brake harshness vibration that may compromise the structural integrity. I have also inspected for corrosive rust. What we've got here is just the surface rust, which should wipe off if we take it for a drive or when we hit the brakes. As long as you don't leave your vehicle or car, you know, sat for protracted periods without driving it, you shouldn't really worry about corrosive rust, which arises, you know, primarily from harsh weather conditions where road salt electrolytes is often used. As long as you do not neglect your car or let it sit, you know, for lengthy periods without driving it, corrosive rust wouldn't necessarily etch into your rotor, okay? So, if you've got a pitted brake disc, you know, where you've got like numerous small shallow holes from across the surface of your brake disc, you might, you know, be having a corrosion damage over your disc and you might need to change it, okay? And also check to see if you've got a warped rotor, you know, from uneven pad deposit or hit spots, often arising from incorrect braking procedure. So, you know, bed your pads if, if, you, if you must to prevent vibration and premature rotor and pad failure. So, I have been eliminating probable root causes with respect to determining the root cause of the noise emanating from the braking system. And you know, the most probable or plausible root cause would be the lip, you know, on the rotor. And in order to do this, I will need to get the wheel off, you know, and get a micrometer to measure the actual thickness of the rotor or disc, okay? Or use a vernier caliper and a cushion or coin to, um, to determine its thickness. So, I have taken the car for a short drive and you can see that the surface rust has come off. And you can also see that we've got vented discs here. And you know, when you turn your steering fully, 360 degrees cycle turns to the far left or to the far right, you will be able to determine and inspect and anal analyze your rotor a lot better as you'd be able to see the disc on the other side um, in your braking system, okay? And see the lip that's developed on the other side, but I can just about feel it, you know, you know, just by rubbing my hands around the circumference of the rotor. This is the first root cause that has been identified for the noises emanating from the braking system, but it doesn't necessarily mean that this is the only root cause. You could have a cascade of root causes, okay? So I'll be looking, you know, in depth a bit further and eliminating probable variable root causes during visual inspection. You can measure the total thickness of the vented disc using a micrometer, and you can see here that the inner disc circumference feels quite lippy and you've got two lines there presumably suggesting cracking there aren't any heat spots whapping or scarring on the disc you know but the total thickness measures 24 mil during the last brake inspection at the garage a wheel bolt was installed in place of the wheel locking knot which is the bolt which hasn't got a cap on it's fairly new okay and that's because the wheel locking nut was rusty, the threading was compromised, and so this bolt was installed. And so this summary of the work that was done was brake inspection, wheel, bolt, and brake fluid renewal. A standard bolt was replaced in lieu of the locking wheel nut due to the integrity of the threading on the locking wheel nut being compromised by corrosive rust. And so, when installing the standard bolt in place of the locking knot or the anti-theft knot, the technician operator of FITA overly tight-tightened the replacement bolt in a slightly skewed orientation and as a result, um, the profile in the hole was cross-threaded. And I will show you what the hub looks like, you know, when the wheels get taken off, okay? 
This is the hub attached to the wheel. And when you take the wheel off, if there isn't any threading in the first hole, okay? And that's as a result of, you know, over torque tightening and cross threading. But when you look at other subsequent holes, you can definitely see threading on the inside of them holes, okay? So imagine a bolt has been cross threaded, you know, when overly torque tightening into that hole position. So when you come to undo the locking nut from the cross threaded profile position, you risk sharing or damaging the key matching pattern or sequence in the locking key. And as you can see, them seven points in the curved heptagonal key matching pattern or sequence has been severed or sheared. And as a result, you know, rendering the locking key defective. The locking key wouldn't match, latch or provide the required torque traction or force required to torque loosen the locking knot. Any attempt to force the issue could damage the locking knot key slots further as well as cut slices off or share or deburr the locking key matching pattern further and compromising its integrity. This should not be confused with your standard bolts, you know, which require like your wheel spanner to get off, okay? So it's important that you don't overly tuck tight in your locking knots and standard bolts. You do not leave your car undriven for long protracted periods. And if your locking key doesn't key in properly into the locking knot and, you know, give it any desired traction, do not force the torque loosening process. If you forceful it, torque loosen from a cross threaded hole position. You're going to get a lot of the threading profile, the bird chamfered off or, you know, just file off due to excessive wear and tear or friction. Unfortunately, most garages will not rethread the whole position as it's only a temporary fix. So instead of reworking, I, I decided to repair the hub by just getting a brand new hub, okay? And so this is the defective hub with the filed out um, cross threaded hole. It will be getting replaced with a brand new one, okay, to take care of the, the problem. Or the squealing and grinding noise when pumping on them pedal brakes. As this is another potential root cause that could be causing the grinding and squealing um, noise that you hear. And you can clearly see the threading in that whole position, you know, but you can also clearly see that there isn't any threading in the whole position that was initially cross threaded and which subsequently lost all of the threading in its whole position when torque loosening. And this is the hole in question. You can see it's got, you know, close to no threading in that whole position. And so with a worn out wheel hub bearing, you would usually get like a grinding noise, a humming noise, a vibrating or wobbling wheel, you know, your car pulling to one side, uneven brake pad or tire tear, which are all signs of a damaged wheel bearing okay so assiduously and painstakingly take cognizance of the work that's always carried out on your car so that you're not liable for every single repair in this case the liability was 50 50 as i was responsible for the wheel hub bearing replacement cost but because i was able to prove on a balance of probabilities that the cross threading was induced by the garage they will be responsible for the compromised lock wheel nut. So I'll be getting a brand new set of locking wheel nuts and a locking wheel key for all them four tires, okay, to prevent, you know, theft of my tires. But, um, you know, theft is not really rampant these days, but if you've got an exotic car, you shouldn't be using standard bolts, okay? So I refuted, I refused, you know, getting standard bolts on my tires and, and we'll have the brand new locking wheel nut installed courtesy of the garage and that's about it really click on the link in the description for other car fixes and operations like you know how to pressure wash your cars how to fix your cigarette lighter how to take out a stock locking wheel nut how to change a pulling filter how to clean the internal upholstery in your car and so on okay thank you for your time and thank you for listening and don't forget to subscribe and share helps the channel grow and um, hopefully catch up with you later. Goodbye.